Hello and a warm welcome to Invest Africa. I'm Bronwyn Nielsen. Over the coming weeks, we'll be taking an in-depth look at the challenges and opportunities associated with investing in Africa. We'll be traveling up and down the continent, getting insight into the various economic territories across Africa. This week, we travel to Kenya, dubbed East Africa's powerhouse, to explore its growth potential and other pressing challenges the country is facing. Spanning close to 600,000 square kilometers, Kenya is home to some 39 million people. Situated between Somalia and Tanzania, bordered by the Indian Ocean, Kenya is known as the regional hub for trade and finance in East Africa. A significant 22% of Kenya's GDP still stems from its agricultural sector, which employs over two-thirds of the labor force. The country has also posted significant growth in the service sector, which contributes just over 60% of GDP. This is mainly attributed to the rapid expansion of their telecoms and financial services over the past decade. Although the country is an exporter of coffee and fish, mainly to Uganda, Tanzania and the UK, Kenya is still a net importer of commodities such as iron, plastic and machinery to import partners India, China and South Africa. Between 2003 and 2007, the Kenyan government embarked on an economic reform program, which led to a gradual recovery of GDP to 7% in 2007 from 2.8% in 2003. However, this was dampened by violent outbursts preceding the general elections that took place late in 2007. The economic downturn was further intensified by drought and the global financial crisis, which posted GDP at less than 2% in 2008. The economy rebounded between 2009 to 2010. However, 2011 saw a growth of 4.3% due to inflationary pressures and sharp currency depreciation, which was fueled by increased costs in food, fuel imports, and a shrinking tourism sector. Now, coupled by, by the increase in the price of oil, uh, you know, it means that the economy then went into kind of a, a shock and the economic growth slowed down substantially. We have recently started recovering. The stock market has started recovering slowly. Uh, but the threat still remains because the euro crisis is still there. The oil price is still going up. And the price of oil, once oil goes up, it affects uh, our inflation in this country. And uh, as such, you find that uh, you know, the interest rates go up and therefore business suffer as a whole. The establishment of the EAC came from the understanding that sustained growth can be derived from regional integration, with objectives including harmonisation, tariffs and customs regimes, free movement of people and improving regional infrastructures. What, what holds back our competition? Costs. You know, it, it costs a tremendous amount of money to get our imports from Mombasa to Nairobi. We're one of the most expensive countries in the world to do that. Um, you know, Uganda is more expensive than we are, Rwanda is more expensive than we are. Why? Because those goods have to come through Kenya. That's the only reason. This week, Kenya saw the first tranche of a 600 million US dollar international loan syndicate to the finance ministry. These funds will be used to support Kenya's ambitious infrastructure developments, especially roads which are pivotal to Kenya's economic growth. Now joining me in the studio to give us their views on Kenya as a business and investment destination, Sven Richter, Head of Frontier Markets, Renaissance Capital, Johnny Orkam, General Manager, Strategic Relations and Business Development Africa at MTN Business, and Yaren Asabi, he's the CEO of Digital Solutions Group, and joining us from our bureau in Nairo Nairobi is Martin Odua Otieno, he's the CEO of Kenya Commercial Bank. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining me. You, Sven, let's start with you. This looks like a very positive story. Story, Kenya, can we fault it? Um, well, we think it's a very positive story. I mean, with Nigeria, Kenya and Nigeria are two biggest investment destinations for our sub Saharan fund. I don't think we can fault it as an investment destination, but everything also has its challenges that you have to deal with. And as they mentioned, one of the biggest challenges that we have to deal with in Kenya is infrastructure. Well, this is nothing new to the African continent story. Martin, let's throw it to you. One of the biggest challenges, says Sven, is infrastructure. How are we doing on the infrastructure front in, in Nairobi specifically? 
the, the infrastructure uh, has, has been uh, a challenge, obviously, and uh, uh, it's now one of the, the focus points under the Vision 2030, uh, which, um, uh, is, whose objective is to make Kenya a, transform Kenya into a middle-income economy uh, by 2030. And so there's a lot of uh, work that is going on around infrastructure at the moment. Um, you know, a lot of road construction, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, financed and, 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 and uh, implemented by the uh, programs out of China. Uh, there's uh, construction and refurbishment around airports. Uh, we're also seeing the seaports, uh, you know, being uh, worked on. So, yes, there's recognition that uh, infrastructure has been an issue and that uh, for any meaningful development to take place, that this has got to be uh, a, a priority for, for, for government and indeed for private sector players. Johnny, from an MTN perspective, what are you seeing on the ground, experiencing the same challenge as we're hearing from both Martin and Sven? So infrastructure is definitely a challenge. I think the cable systems are now into, uh, into Kenya. It's quite a mature market. The problem is getting that connectivity back inland and making it more price, less price sensitive than it currently is. There's a lot of challenges at the moment where you've got price competition, price wars. Um, and I think we need to start moving away from that and move into the solutions environment. So what is it that can actually be placed within the Kenyan market, such as data center solutions, virtualization, cloud computing, that actually makes it significant for the people on the is ground. Is that happening it. though? It is to a point, but not as much. I think uh, one point that was made a little bit earlier is that the endpoint devices, the taxation is still quite high. So as soon as you can start decreasing the price of those endpoint devices, modems, laptops, handsets, you start making it more available to the masses. Yaron, let's get your thoughts on this. You've been nodding there while Johnny's been chatting away. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that applications are, are growing in the region. I think that Kenyans are generally very quick to adopt technology. We've seen the success of M-Pesa. Uh, it's a great African success story. And I think that Kenya acts as a, as a hub for East Africa. And uh, we're certainly seeing a very high maturity of, of market adoption rates. The operators that we work with are very, very advanced. And I think we're kind of leapfrogging a few technologies um, in Kenya. Kenya is very quick to adopt. And, and because of that, we're seeing them. Uh, social media is huge. Uh, you know, you can just see uh, people walking into um, handset stores and asking for a phone that does Twitter and Facebook. I think 26% of Kenyans on Twitter. So it's, it's quite amazing to see the adoption of applications, which is really our focus, and hence why we open an office there. Martin, <coughs> Yaron referring to the East African community and what is going right in the, the territory. Do you think that the East African community led by Kenya is ahead of what we're seeing out of ECOWAS, uh, specifically when it comes to the free movement of people, capital and goods? Uh, well, there is still uh, obviously room for improvement there. Um, but uh, the, what we've seen in the, in the more in the recent years is that uh, the governments have renewed their commitment to uh, make the fru free movement of, uh, of goods, people, um, and, and commerce and trade generally and investment uh, much easier. You know, we, uh, uh, KCB, which is the bank that I'm chief executive of, now operates in all the five countries of the East African community. Uh, we just opened up in Burundi about uh, four or five weeks ago. And what I've seen uh, over the, the last five years that we've made most of these investments is that there's been uh, real sort of uh, appetite and real support by the respective governments to get this whole regional investment uh, thing back on track. We still have a few challenges around uh, uh, free movement of people and of course the the tax regime is still, uh, uh, you know, some way to go. Uh, but I, I believe that the commitment is there, and over the, the, the coming years, we'll see this coming much, much uh, more, more closely. Uh, and and uh, a lot of it, in fact, is being driven by the private sector because the uh, private sector is keen to go out and uh, invest and, and, and make money and, and, and grow their businesses. So there's a lot of private uh, uh, public sector discussions, uh, you know, government to government and government to private sector groupings uh, ongoing to accelerate this. Sven, the tax regime has yes. some way to go. How quickly do you think we're going to get re reform on this front? Well, it's always challenging exactly how far, you know, how quick. I think one of the challenges that we do have now is obviously Kenya's going into elections. So I think during the election, all those things will take a backseat. But, you know, if we just look at the integration that there is now, 
and the fact that there was a history of integration previously. We as investors look at Kenya as a hub for the region and not just us. If you look at, at headquarters of multinational firms, they're headquartered in Nairobi. You look at where the UN for East Africa is, it's headquartered in Nairobi. So everyone does think that this is the hub and we think a tax will, will come about, people will be able to move and it's going to be, we think of Kenya as 120 million people, not 40 million people because we incorporate everything. And as also you have oil fines in places like Rwanda, not so much Rwanda, but Uganda and also now in Kenya, all of that will flow through Kenya back and forth in terms of the transportation and the money is being invested into the railroads and into the improvement so we think it's a big, a big integration coming. Regulation must be a headache on, on your side, Johnny. I mean, I hate to, I hate to comment words on regulation because regulation in Africa generally is, is a bit of a challenge. You've got to live with it. You've got to live with it. You've got to, you've got to obviously work with it. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of, of, of MTN working in Africa is we, we work with the regulations. I think it's, it's using what we have in place at the moment. Like in Kenya, there's a universal access fund. That universal access fund may not be used as significantly as it should be used. Um, we have them in, in the complete, in, in Zambia, we have it in, uh, in Ethiopia, you have them well, when it does completely deregulate. You have it in Tanzania. Now what are they using the Universal Access Fund for that can benefit the end customer? At this stage, I don't see it happening. Um, and it's for private, the private guys to say, MTN, to go to the government and say, this is what we'd like to do in some of the schools. This is what we'd like to do in some of the government institutions. Let's use some of those funds to make it beneficial. And I, I think I, I agree with the point that was made in, in Kenya. We really need to work with government to make it available. How receptive are the regulators to the digital solutions? Now, of course, that also plays into MTN, but Facebook, Twitter, I mean, this is a new game, and it j certainly flies in the face of regulation. I mean, you can't control. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, think, I think that it's, it's, it's new, so therefore it's still being regulated. I think throughout Africa, there's uh, uh, an uncertainty how to regulate because they're trying to follow uh, what's happening internationally and what's happening in Europe and in the States. Um, but uh, certainly the adoption is there. I think that Kenyans, as I said earlier, are... are Don't we need to just accept that there's, there's no place for reg regulation in social media? Ex absolutely, because uh, at the end of the day, the OTT players kind of um, are so almost self-regulated because the crowd is kind of determining where the regulation should go. So uh, I think if Facebook comes out with a policy that people object to, then they make a big noise about it, and the same with Twitter. And uh, I think for, for the regulator, it's very tough to, to kind of regulate an environment that's regulated by the crowds. Martin, this is an interesting one. We're just going to pull out this section a little bit further. But how are you reacting to the social media wave from a Kenya commercial bank perspective? Have you got any thoughts for us there? Uh, yes, we, we are certainly in that social media space. Uh, if you, <coughs> you, can, you can find us uh, at, um, at K, KCB Group. Uh, and, and what we are finding as a bank is that, uh, you know, um, there's, there's, there's increased interaction clearly with our customers and other stakeholders through, um, through Twitter uh, and also uh, Facebook. So it's, it's, it's a revolution of its own, which uh, I don't think that businesses can uh, afford to ignore or to avoid these days. So, so I participate, my senior team participate, and, uh, you know, we, we link up with other organizations. Uh, and I find that uh, you know some of the issues that hitherto didn't come to light at uh, senior levels are actually being brought to uh, uh, our attention much much faster, and we've got to respond to to them. So, so there's a, there's a sense in which we've got to find a, a strategy that uh, deals with the social social media positively, but also how we address some of the negative impacts which may uh, which may come with it. We're going to a quick commercial break. More on Invest Africa when we return. Don't go anywhere.